Hello, my name is Greg Brewer with AC Controls, and I will be doing an instructional video on the Honeywell MC Toolkit. Now, the MC Toolkit is a communicator to configure smart transmitters. It works very similarly to the Hart 375, 475 devices you may be aware of or may be using. The difference is this also communicates with the Honeywell DE or Digitally Enhanced Protocol, plus as you can see, it has a Windows Mobile interface to it, so you're already familiar with getting around with the operating system itself. Now, this device ships with two programs. One is designed to work for Hart Universal Devices, all manufacturers, just like the Hart 475 communicators, as well as the second program that works with the Honeywell DE protocol. So, with this device, all you need to know before connecting is are you connecting to a heart device or a Honeywell DE device? In this situation, I'm connected to a heart transmitter. In this case, it happens to be a DP transmitter. I've pulled up the program on the MC Toolkit that communicates with heart transmitters, and I've pulled all the information from the device into it. This is the screen that you see when you pull the information in. Uh, in the information screen, you see the specifics of the transmitter, the type of transmitter, whether it has a heart address or not. Here I can look at how I want to configure the views on the screen of, of the MC Toolkit. Down here I can save the history of what I do to the transmitter. The function screen is the main screen that you're going to be working off of. Uh, on the device status, when I select that, it gives me some recent history of the transmitter. Any configuration changes, for example, will be stored here. When I return back, I can go to the methods list, select that, and that will give me a whole list of executables I can do to the transmitter. For instance, I can do a loop test, I can do a sensor trim, I can zero the input, I can do a variety of things here. I'm going to return back here and go online and start doing some interfacing directly with the transmitter. Here you see the menu tree, just like uh, you see in a typical Windows file manager format. And if I go in here, I can expand the menu tree and get into the specifics of the device. Here I've got the process variables. You see I've got the pressure, what it's currently outputting. There's no pressure applied to it, so it's reporting basically zero inches of pressure here. Over here you see icons depicted in gray. If they're in gray, that means there's nothing I can do to that. It's for indication only. So on this screen, it's just for informational purposes. Over here, these are some of the executables I can do in the diagnostics. And in the basic setup, this is where I start doing some of the specifics of changing configuration, which you would normally do on a transmitter. For instance, right now, the uh, transmitter is set up. I can change that. You see here, I got this warning screen up, and it's telling me that as a reminder, if I make any change to this transmitter and if it's still connected to the process loop, it could cause a process hiccup. And in most cases, that's not good. Just saying, I'm going to plow through this because I got nothing to upset here. And then I can change inches of water. I can change it to inches of mercury, millimeters of mercury, whatever I want to. Pascals, I'm going to OK that. It's going to force me to OK that change, and then I can get into the basic setup. Now, if you notice here, I have an interface to the local meter. If I want to change the displayed inches of water column, I can go in here and change it just like I did the sensor. And the detailed setup, here's where I can get into changing more of the parameters. You see here I've got four listed parameters that I can change. For instance, the lower range value right now is set for zero. I can leave that there. I can change the upper range value. And I've got that little warning again. I'm going to plow through that one more time. And then I can go ahead and change to whatever I want. In this case, I'll change it to 100 inches. I can go back and change it again if I want to, or I can just return to the main screen. Now, further down is every single P 
piece of information related to the transmitter. This gets into the notes, the tag, all of that you've got it on one screen here. You notice I have a, something here in yellow. That means actually two things. You'll recall that I made two changes on this transmitter, but I haven't written it to the transmitter yet. So the last thing I want to do if I want to actually store it to the transmitter, I go ahead and I send it to the transmitter by checking these boxes. And now I'm performing an execute on the transmitter. It's storing it to non-volatile memory. So uh, once the uh, transmitter is unplugged, well, the changes I've made to it will be stored, not lost. That's it. Now in this situation, I'm connected to a DE device. And what I've done on the MC Toolkit is configured each program on a hotkey. So all I need to do to pull up either the heart program or the DE program is hit a pre-assigned hotkey. In this case, I've assigned the DE program to the F1, so it pulls right on up. I'm gonna go ahead and start connecting to this uh, DE transmitter now. It's giving me a warning just to make sure that I know I'm connected to a DE device because I don't want to do damage to a non-DE device by trying to use this program and communicating to it, so I acknowledge that. I get the same kind of message that I got on the heart device this time, which is reminding me that I can create process upsets by communicating with a transmitter that's it's actually in service. So again, I'm going to plow through that, and then it's going to start pulling up the device information digitally into the program here. Now the first screen I get will be a status screen, which basically gives me the front page of the transmitter. I, I see the tag information, the type, in this case the ST3000. I see the, the lower range, upper range values, and I see a green status here. So this screen is verifying that everything's okay with this transmitter. It's good to go. Now I'll start uploading all the device data. All right, it's pulled up. Here's the main menu. So if I go into the device menu, I get pretty much the same kind of information I was getting when it first just pulled up the front page. You know, I've got the tag ID. I'm getting the, uh, the specifics of the prom on the electronics. In here, I'm getting uh, some information on the process variable. Right now, it's set up for single range with the secondary variable, in this case, temperature. Now, with DE devices, I can communicate either analog 4 to 20 or with actual the digital square way, which was the first communications protocol for, first, for smart transmitters to come out back in the early 80s. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to stay with the 4 to 20 analog, and I'm just going to communicate digitally over this loop that we've created here. So just like we did with the heart device. Here I can configure the transmitter just like we did earlier. I see here that I've got upper range limits here. The units are in PSIG. This is a gauge transmitter here. I see the level of dampening here. The conformity, all this I can do on this screen. Now, in the calibration screen, I can actually do some changes to the output. If, for instance, I need to do a slight sensor adjustment, I can do some corrections to, for instance, the lower range value. If I need to do a slight correction to the zero, I can do it on this screen. I can do the loop test here. I can reset any corrections that I just did that I mentioned here, for instance, zero, I can reset it and put it back. On this transmitter, you saw that it has no local meter on there. If it did, I could, just as with the heart device, I could communicate with the meter, make writing changes to that, and store it. Back on this screen, this is where I changed the upper range value. So, for instance, if I want to change that to, say, 1,000, I tap it in. And then I can go back. On this screen, I can just monitor what's going on with the transmitter here. You see what my input is. Virtually zero PSI. 
and then my output is virtually 4 milliamps. I'm still getting a good device status. Everything is well on this. Now the last thing I need to do, since I'm not using a DE protocol output, I'm using a 4 to 20, I need to go ahead and, and store that to non-volatile memory. If I were communicating with a DE output, every change I made is automatically and immediately stored to the transmitter, but on the 4 to 20 side, I need to go ahead and make sure I write this to non-volatile memory. So the last thing I do, store it to the device so when power is unplugged, and that was successful, when I power back up, it's exactly like we left it. Now, if I want to do one more thing, I can with this program. If I want to store this configuration, I can actually store it to the communicator. I can save it as a file, I can pull that file up later, and then I can work offline on that file, save that, reconnect to the transmitter, and then send that reconfigured file to the transmitter. So I can do a lot of offline work as well. It looks pretty much like this, while I'm working with a file instead of live data on the transmitter. That's it. As manufacturers of, of hard instrumentation, introduce new products, there will be new DDFs that come out, and this device can be updated with new DDFs by this port here connected to your computer. These DDF files are available for free download, so you can stay current as new products uh, come out. This port is also the port that charges this device here. The toolkit can be used in class one and class two approval areas it just needs to be ordered that way. My name is Greg Brewer with AC Controls, and this has been an instructional video on the MC Toolkit.